Right, in this video we are going to tell you and talk about upgrading your Land Rover Defender to adaptive cruise control. So we'll look at what is adaptive cruise control, how do you use it, what options do you have to configure it on your car. So, adaptive cruise controls. When you can set cruise control, we all know cruise control, set it to 70 miles an hour because we're safe on the motorway. But if something slows down in front of you, you've got to interfere and brake. But with adaptive cruise control, it does like this radar lock. So you approach the slower moving car and then it slows down and you, you move and you can actually configure the, the stop gap distance to be far, medium or close. So you can just, and then you go along and then if he turns off, whoop, it speeds back up again and actually bring you to a standstill and it will actually, in queue in traffic, it will follow. It's an absolute dream if you're in traffic. Now, our car didn't come with adaptive cruise control, but this little badge here, here you go, behind there, there's a radar. And the radar is looking all the time. And this is part of the sort of compulsory stuff that needs to be fitted to vehicles now as part of the NCAP Euro Safety Collision Avoidance. It comes under the umbrella of ADAS, which is the Advanced Driver Assistance Systems or something like that. So all cars have the hardware to do the adaptive cruise control but they're not all configured in the software. And you can get into the software and configure it. I'm not sure how legal that is, even. I mean, presumably, should it be licensed or whatever, but I'm gonna gloss over that, and we are gonna talk about how you can do it, what tools are out there to do it. Right, now, this is the genuine Bosch Land Rover VCI thing. And we did a video setting this up, didn't we, Alessia? Yeah. But we haven't worked out. We're not good enough yet to work out how to set adaptive cruise control with this, are we? Yeah. So, and it may not be able to do it because Land Rover probably don't want you to do it too easily at the dealers. Otherwise, all those dealers would just be configuring all their second-hand cars with adaptive cruise control. That is about 1,500 pounds, I think. And, but it is a really good bit of kit, and that allows you to connect to Topics Cloud, which is the cloud-based Land Rover diagnostic system. Right, this is our old favorite Gap Diagnostics IID tool, and it's a little dongle that goes into your ODB2 port, if you can get it out the box. Um, plugs in, there's an app on your phone, which is so convenient, because you can take this with you everywhere, and this will read fault codes, change your car configuration files. So this, the CCF, the car configuration files, is the software that tells this car, because actually the software for adaptive boost control is actually in the car, the hardware's on the car, it's just the bit that says it's available for use. You just gotta to toggle it, and that is what the car configuration is all about. So this allows you to control. Right, we've got a new kid on the block. This is, we've used, been playing with this a bit. So this is a diagnostics associate tool. Now you can do fault code reading with this. You can do car configuration changes, CCF files with this tool. With nothing else, you don't need an app on your phone. Just plug it in and follow the on-screen menus. And we will be doing that today. Um, but this also, this tool in some ways does what this does because it allows you also to connect to Topics Cloud so you can use this instead of the Bosch one. Um, you can also do CCF changes so in many ways. Now price wise I forget what the gap tool is I think it's about £550 I think. Alicia's nodding so that's good. This one is about £1,000 so if you want to do cheap CCF changes the gap is probably the way to go but if you want to do some topics cloud stuff, some diagnostic stuff, this could be an option worth considering. So we are gonna go and have a look. Right, let's go and look in the car now. So how do you know if you've got adaptive cruise control on your car? Maybe you bought it second hand and you've never even thought about it. So you can go into the menu on your car and you can look in all, and you can look in, what we're gonna go, vehicle. Yeah. It's hidden away and it's in driver assistance. Now, and you can go into cruise and limiter. Now, adaptive speed, um, don't, that is not the same as, as adaptive cruise control. That just 
limits the speed depending on what speed limit you're in, what what area, if you're in a built-up area or on a motorway, etc. Um, you will have a menu here that will say the stop gap, and you can set it for near or far. So we haven't got that menu, so I know we haven't got adaptive cruise control. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to plug the IID tool in, because the IID tool lets us see all the individual settings that this car has now for the adaptive cruise control. Then what we're actually going to do now is we're actually going to use the diagnostics associates because you'll see that's really cool. That's a one click and it will do everything for you. So we're going to see what it is before and after and we're going to show you how good the diagnostics associate tool is. It's it's quicker than going through all the menus but I just want to see what changes and prove that that one button there changes multiple things. Now one thing we need to look at is the diagnostics associate tool is free on some features but it charges you a token on others. The Gap IID tool, once you've bought it, you can change CCFs on your car, only on your car, as much as you like. Read fault codes as much as you like, and it's all for free. So this is a one-time hit, and it's the cheapest. Right, so we are going to plug that in the IID, not in the IID, in the o OBD, I keep getting it wrong, Onboard Diagnostics Port. Too many abbreviations. Then I'm going to open my phone. I'm going to go into the Gap Diagnostics. We're going to connect to the last tool we've got the ignition on okay right let that load and we are going to go into the car configuration okay and what you can do is you can create there's loads of files right so let me just show you what i've did so you can go in the complete list right and there's just hundreds and hundreds but you can search for things that have got acc adaptive cruise control and and the word cruising, and I've compiled a list of all the things that had the words ACC um, and that in, and you can see that now, and I've taken a screenshot, I'll take a screenshot of that now, and I'll post that in the video. Okay, oh, turn my phone up. There you go, press the right buttons. Right, so that is our settings. So, but you can go in, in with the IID tool, I'll show you. This is one that we know is gonna change the cruise control without cruise control, and you can go, from without cruise, cruise control. Is that the one that was going to change? Now that wasn't, was it? No. No, it was the one that was the 580 one. Mm -hmm. So that one there, um, normal cruise fitted, you can get adaptive cruise and adaptive cruise, I think it was that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's how you could change it and then you would save it with the IID tool, okay? Right, but let's show you the nice way that it does it on the Diagnostics Associate. I'm not I've got no favourites. I've paid. I actually, I will confess, I got given the gap tool, but I did buy with my own money the diagnostic association. But people ask me about the options, and choice is good, isn't it? Right, Alicia, if you pass me the uh, the whole thing, right. So this is so this comes with a display built in. That's probably why it's four hundred quid more. No, it's because it does all the extra cool stuff. Right, let's plug that in here. I'm getting as good as a car thief now at finding that OBD2 port, I tell you. Like them. I'm not advertising. I'm not available for car thievery hire. Right. So this thing, it does take a while to boot up. It is a little bit tardy in the boot up. So there you go. A little bit of... And then what it's going to do when it eventually boots up is it's going to give us some menus. And we will go into the service menu. Now, Alicia has spent an hour this morning doing a map we should have got the but she i'll put a link to a spreadsheet and a screenshot she's mapped all the options in the diagnostics associate tool so you can see all the things you can do with this tool all right come on all right so we've never done this with this tool um so we are we are sort of all right worth noting it is always worth updating this tool but we did that you've got f4 so f4 means f1 f2 f3 f4 so it's not a touch screen is it alicia no, no. so it's not a touch screen i didn't want to mess it up it's not a touch screen but you've got these like hard buttons here and it'll tell you what they do here right so we can go up and down with this keypad and right what was it in alicia this is gonna be in the second page the second page yeah because it keeps going look so alicia's recorded all these and i think it was called features if i'm not mistaken 
it was yeah vehicle, yeah, vehicle features. features so this is really a ccf editing menu this one here and then if we press okay to go into it okay it's waiting so I guess this is like the IID tool. It's got to read the CCF settings, okay? Now, you'll notice we are connected. We are on a Wi-Fi network. So you do need Wi-Fi to use this tool for some features. So it's sending collected data. So I think it, what it does is it sends it back to its database. So it's got a record of what your car was before you mess it up. And I will disclaim, messing around with CCF files is at your own risk it can lead to all sorts of problems right so you'll see these are all the the options that they're offering us but we're gonna focus on adaptive cruise control so now i'm in i'm in uncharted waters now so let's have a look we'll press okay adaptive right current vehicle so current vehicle configuration Vehicle configuration unknown. Okay, so what, what what have we got? Normal cruise, right? Adaptive cruise controls. Can I just press OK again? Let's have a look. Right, four tokens will be deducted. The user needs four tokens. Press OK to continue. How many tokens we got on here, Alicia? Seven. Seven, and they're about forty. They're about forty pound a token. Fifty. Yeah, so we're going to gobble some tokens up here. I might have to ask Ian for some free ones. Right. Okay, press OK. So this is, okay, so four tokens. Please wait. All right. So it's wise to have a battery charger connected. Right, batteries. Right, actually, let's just stop it here and we'll go and connect the battery charger because we're going to rewrite files and you don't want the battery running out in the middle of a writing. Right, and that connecting your battery charger goes whether you're using the Bosch tool, whether you're using the IID tool. If you're writing to the car software reconfigurement, make sure you've got that. Um, I will put a link to this tool in the description below just so you can see it and read its features. Right, so it's press OK to continue is it let's have a look we got it seems to be okay right please wait now it looks like it's turned the car off or is it just timed out i don't know right data files one of one all right always oh, turn the car on again all right and then we will take it for a road test after this data blocks one of one Download complete. Download complete. Press OK to exit. That was quick, wasn't it? Please wait. Sending collected data. Back to the start. So that should be done. Right. Now, even on Land Rover's own instructions, they say sometimes you have to disconnect the battery. They call it a hard battery reset. Disconnect the battery and reconnect it because then all modules have to learn. But let's just test this. Let's see if we go into that menu now. Let's see if it's got that extra function. That's one thing we will know that it's at least triggered it up. So let's have a look. Right. So we don't have anything added. Now, interestingly, this, this one's been... This one's been greyed out now, um, but I don't have the option to change the thing. Now, let's, and one thing we were going to do is reread the settings, but let's let that go to sleep, shall we? We'll, we'll first of all try just locking the car, leaving it a bit, and then it's lunchtime now. So we'll have our lunch and then we'll come back. I just want to do the minimum possible to make it stick, but you can see at the moment it doesn't see that update hasn't flashed to the 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 ADAS module. Right, let's go. Right, we're all refreshed from lunch. Let's see if it's if we've got the menu up. Now interestingly we've got an, an error message now saying emergency braking not available. Now can you see that Alicia? Yeah. Now I do worry that when you mess with your CCF files you can get these error messages. Let's have a look what we have got in vehicle, in driver assistance, cruise and limiter. Right, adaptive, no, we haven't got it. So it hasn't come up, it hasn't done it. Let's have a look if it changed any CCF files, shall we? 
Right, let's just go and have a look in the IID tool and see if there's any CCF files. Car configuration, continue. Let's see if it did update anything. Right, there we go. So now we need to go on adaptive cruise control. And what have we got? It's fitted. Cruise control. That one wasn't used before, was it? Adaptive cruise control with Q-assist. Okay, let's have a look. Maybe, maybe it's working. Let's have a look. Right, one thing the guys have told me to do is once you've updated that routine, um, if you can't see it, try the, or do this DADC as a matter of routine after you've done that. So, right, so we're just doing that CCF learn, and it's going, well, let me close my door with a bonging going on. Okay, it's thinking about it. So, after we've done this, we've got to do vehicle reset, but. Let's have a look if that does that. We've still got this emergency driver assistance error flashing up. Next one. Oh, is it? Is it gone? Oh, it might have gone. Yeah, it might have gone. Yeah, that's cured the error look. So that is definitely linked to that. It's the procedure's complete. Is it going to... And that has cleared the screen, hasn't it? Right. So, right, let's do the vehicle reset. So... These are in alphabetical order. Let's zoom down here. It would be good if they could sort of put this in the routine, really, if you've got to do it, or at least have some prompt. Vehicle reset. So the vehicle reset doesn't reset it to factory. It just reboots everything and makes sure all the CCF is applied across everything. So let's do this. Right. It's saying it's all, it's looking pretty good. The hour. It's rather unconventional to spin an hourglass, if you think about it, because that would just, you'd never end if you spun an hourglass. That's like, you should leave it that way, and the sand should go through. That's quite weird. Complete. Right. So now, let's have a look. We've got any error messages. All slick. Right, let's go for a test drive. Right, so here we go. Let's test it then. So I don't know how quick you need to be going. But let's push this lever up. There we go. So we've got adaptive cruise control now. Now, we're on close. See if you can change that setting, Alicia, because we don't want to be in BMW mode, do we? No. We don't want to be in follow everyone up the backside. Well, we got 40, we better reduce our speed. There we go, 40. Cruise and limit, yeah. See if you can now change Ooh, that. Oh, is that normal? normal? See if we can change it to far. Let's not harass people. That's it. Far. There we go. And then I guess just go back. It's staying there, isn't yeah, it now? Staying. Yes, we got this. Yeah, so there we go. Adaptive cruise control. I think that's fitted. So there we go. We've used the gap diagnostic not the gap. Oopsie. We've used the diagnostics associates tool um, successfully to install. Um, but bear in mind after you I'll put the I'll put a little summary in the, the steps below in the description. I'll put a link to the tool in the description. I'll put a link to our spreadsheet with all the menus on this tool in the description. Right, have a good weekend. We're off.